Hello, hello, everyone. Thank you for joining wow. us. <laughs> hello, We're going to have a great, yeah, great evening. We've got um, Irene Cornish here, and Hi. she is going to be the week that kicks off tonight. I know people are, are anxious, some of you, to start. And then, of course, Roberta Estes below me. And I'll tell you what, we have been having so much fun with your branches this week. Um, there weren't enough hours in the day, though, I will say that. There just wasn't enough time for everything. So we're going to go over some of those finds, but first I'm going to take a minute and talk about what Wikitree is for those of you that are just joining us. Now, Wikitree is a community of genealogists who are working together on a single family tree. In other words, we collaborate to grow an accurate global tree that connects us all and it's free. The Wikitree Challenge is our year long event and part of our year of accuracy, which I can't believe we are getting near the end of. And that's where we take each week, we take a guest star and a team of people work on their branches and we try and make it as accurate and complete as we can and more complete, hopefully, than it is anywhere else. Our goal is to improve the accuracy on Wikitree to make more connections and to make more friends. And that we definitely have. Now, of course, um, Roberta's captain, Maddie Hardman, has been just, um, or sorry, <laughs> it isn't Maddie for her, it was Laura. Um, Laura has been very busy this week with her team. And I have Maddie on the brain because we were talking just before we started about how Maddie won't be here for Irene. <laughs> And we have just found some amazing stuff we're hoping for Roberta. And the other thing I will say that was a little bit um, different this week is that, you know, we, we've had a number of the guests that blog, but Roberta, your blogs are so captivating <laughs> and people kept getting lost in them, you know, and they were like, oh, I was trying to do this, but oh, I got busy reading that blog again. <laughs> and they're like, I don't know where to go now. She puts so much information in them. Wow, they're just really wonderful. Okay, and we are going to start out, of course, we always start at the great grandparents and we work out. So we're starting on the Lazarus Estes line. And it was known already that Ellen Martin Estes's parents were Thomas and Wilman Martin. Now, what wasn't known was what her maiden name was. So research did find that it proved to be Bax. And her father was Thomas Bax, who was new to Roberta. So that's a new line that you get to get to play in. So you're going to have all these upcoming blogs to do now, Roberta. Yeah. <laughs> you're going to have to look at all your new stuff. And then, of course, Elizabeth Vanoy's line. And they tried so hard to find things on this line. But really, you have that so extensively mapped out already. And Elaine did, though, take the time to try and find the history on that cabin. And, you know, you had done that wonderful uh, blog about the Vanoy's and Vanoy Road and the different mm -hmm. places you couldn't go in the Jeep. And... <clears throat> she did wind up kind of last, you know, right at the end of the week, finally finding the prior owner, which was John Henry Bailey. Now, he was the last owner of the property, and he died in 1996, so we're not sure who owns it modern day. Um, but a cursory look, and like I said, this was coming right up to the wire, so this was right up before um, the live cast started, and I got the last few notes from the team. A uh, cursory search shows that John's maternal grandmother was Sarah Jane Vanoy. So, oh, yeah. That makes sense, yeah. So oh, you how have... exciting. I'm so excited. <laughs> so now you have an actual Vanoy connection. I'll tell you what, Elaine's been working hard on, on trying to find stuff for that cabin this week. And I know you have the... Um, the wonderful picture that was entitled the what was it the old Vanoy cabin or whatever yeah, in one yeah. of the blogs and the workmanship looks exactly the same so that was really I, excited to find out you don't have to go that far back to find a Vanoy in that I would um I thought sure that thing had been long gone by now how exciting oh I can't wait to look at this more closely yeah that was actually posted on a real estate site so on <laughs> the picture a current picture of it <laughs> Excuse me. Now we have Margaret and Claxton's line. And on that, we took a look at Thomas Craighead, McSpadden Jr., and Dorothy Edmiston. And of course, they were already on your primary tree. But probate was found proving that Dorothy was a daughter of Robert Edmiston, whose will was probated in 1850. And it was interesting. He left her five pounds of Pennsylvania money. Now he left 
five pounds, I think it was another five pounds of Virginia money to his wife. And then the son got the plantation and everything else. So I guess, you know, the men ran the roost back then. And, and mm -hmm. uh, but, it, but she was mentioned. So that proved, proved who her, her father was. And Robert was part of the Borden tract of Augusta, Virginia, which of course, you know, he was one of the earliest settlers mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now this one, I, I'd have to say that we had the most success um, of activity. There was a lot of activity on different branches, but some of them, they just couldn't find the records out there. But there was a lot of movement on the Faverta line. And so we're going to start here right now with Anna Elizabeth Pambergen, who was proven to be Anna Elizabeth Bamberger, so really close. Um, her parents were Jan Bamberger and Maria Hansen Germerod, and I'll get a few of these wrong, I know, tonight, so forgive me. Um, <coughs> sorry, allergies. There are now four new direct ancestors on that line, so that was very exciting. He served as a soldier under Sir Captain Johann Victorin, Baron de Ronau. Now, this baron was actually present at his marriage. And the seal that you see on the lower left, that was a seal that was kept um, from the baron. So okay. that explains something, because we have had this persistent story about connectivity to this royal line. And I could never find it. And I bet you I, 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 I bet I, I bet that's it. Yeah, and I know um, David been looking at, and to see if one of the other lines was possibly the royal line, and he at the last minute said, "Sorry, I, sorry to disappoint her, but I didn't find any royalty on this line either." But yeah, well, it <coughs> yeah, might not be that they were related. It could be just that they were associated, and you know how stories get, right? You know, yeah, they kind of grow over the years. But yeah. how exciting is that? I mean, and that's really yeah. that's really a cool seal. When you look on his profile, the picture is much clearer. I love those old seals too. I just love them. I know, the things we don't do anymore today. Yeah. And then also on this line, we had a Thomas O.S. and his father, um, A.L. Peters, was uh, recorded on his marriage record. So that was just another small discovery amongst the many this week that they found on those lines. Now, on a sad note, we had Jan Ferverda, um, whose name was Perbita or Perberta at birth. He was only three months old when his father died. So, mm -hmm. and I, we found several of those, I think the team did um, during the week. But in the death record, they actually talked about him, about his father, Salomon, mm -hmm. who used to live on Pilter Street. And husband of, of Greta Roloffs was buried in the church at Groningen. I guess they didn't have a lot of money because a sheet was used for the burial. It was lent to them and they didn't charge them for any use of it. But that picture there is what, of course, the street looks like nowadays, more modern picture, but that's the area. They actually looked up the address to find the area that he was living. So that's kind of cool. I've stood in that street. Have you? Yeah. Yeah. And Solomon is my brick wall in that line. So, oh, wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now we had told people, I'm sure you probably weren't watching Saturday, but um, hinting to some of them that, that weren't following everything in Discord this week, um, that there we had a couple of, of pieces of information that proved dates and whatnot for us that weren't the usual types of information. So this one, um, I don't know if you've seen this or not, but this was, I thought, an outstanding one. That was really fun. Have you seen the silver spoon? I've seen that spoon in person. Yes, I have. I haven't written about it, but I've been there. I went with a vet and she arranged the museum to get it out, but she didn't tell me that in advance. We had oh, to go wow. sit in this room and they brought me the spoon. Yes. Oh, wow. I know. I know. It was amazing. That is so amazing. I know. Isn't it beautiful? It is. I wish they would have done uh, dual pictures and shown the backside where the birth date and everything was actually inscribed. I have one that I can post. Oh, that'd be really cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We were all excited about the spin. <laughs> that was like oh, that's yeah. one of the neatest things. Oh, I know. I, I mean, how exciting. I mean, I was, when Yvette told me that, I'm like, no, seriously. Yeah. She goes, yeah. Like, 
Now, here was another one on that line, and Garrett Piers um, de Young was first married to Efka Harmons. She died in 1809 at the age of 36. They had four children together. Now, he remarried to a Trinjay Argens um, in Bard. He filed for a name change. So this was our second. We had two pieces of unusual um, information, not our standard fare. Hmm. This was actually a record where he went into the courts and applied adding the de Young to the last name. So, and it listed the three living children at that time that he'd had with the first wife, as well as their ages. So that was kind of cool. And all of them had that additional uh, surname from that point forward. Now, he married a second time, of course, to another, uh, to a Trinje, and they had no children together. So he was not doing real good on the wife point uh, side. They were not, they did not have a lot of longevity. And so he married a third time in 1833 to Trinje Minsma, and he had one child with her. So he was actually pretty old at, at this point. And I believe he was about 20 years older than what his wife was. Um, but he did have one child with that third wife. He died five years later at the age of 64. So um, his youngest son was only four years old. And then she removed to Hughesham two years later and remarried and had several children. Wow. But that was kind of cool. You know, we had to ask like our Netherlands people, our Dutch uh, experts. Okay, so what is this one? Because, you know, <laughs> and what is this record? I knew what the name change one, one was. I couldn't figure out the other one. That's now, really, a, that name change is really unusual. That's a yeah, very unusual record. Yeah, and we've done a lot of, Nether, you know, the, the in the Netherlands, um, the Dutch research this year off and on. And that's the first one I've seen of that. So mm -hmm. I'm not sure what the story is behind that, but maybe you'll find out once you do some more research on him. Mm -hmm. We have Efke Hessels, wife of Jan Piers, who is said to have been from Britsum. Uh, this was a really um, just last, last minute in the week, another discovery that was pretty cool. But mm -hmm. records show that she was 17 when her mother died. Her mother was already a widow. And so um, her siblings, Gertie, who was 22, Dirk was only 19, and her brother Cornelius was only 13, uh, were all mentioned in the mother's death record in 1720. And so um, Efka, she married Jan Piers, of course, five years later and had five children with him. And she lived for a long time, though. She lived to the age of 78. So that's pretty good for that mm -hmm. time period. Now, on the Miller line, um, this one, we didn't, the team didn't have a lot of movement on that, but that's another one that you had already done some really extensive work on, so they weren't wanting to focus as much on that so they could get the other lines. But if you look back through those on WikiTree now, you'll see that I noticed several lines actually stretch back further than what you have on your primary tree. Now, our team didn't have time to go over them. There's never enough hours in the week, you mm -hmm. know, and see what sources they've attached. But there were several of them that stretched out further. So that's just good clues for you to use. Um, well, you can count research. on that. <laughs> <laughs> I know. She's going to go in and put that one on the list. They're <laughs> all on the list. one on the list. <laughs> Now, this one was on Curtis Benjamin Lohr's line, Henry Hill of Barrington, and this was just kind of um, interesting and then sad, though. And he had petitioned on the behalf of his late son, Joseph's infant sons, Henry, Robert, and John. Joseph was serving in an expedition to Canada and was active in the taking of the island of St. John, uh, most likely during the Seven Year War. And it was very graphic. It said there he was slain by a cannonball shot from the enemy, which almost divided his body. And so the petition was um, on behalf of the children who had no parents now. They were all orphaned. And the, eventually the, the case was dismissed. So, you know, I don't know if the family members just went ahead and, and raised them and didn't get any compensation or, or what the remainder of that story was. But that was another interesting piece of information. And that's a brick wall for me, too. Oh, is it? Well, it was. 
It's not yeah. now. <laughs> she goes, well, it was, but it isn't now. I know. See, and you find these little things sometimes and you just look upon them and they can tell you all kinds of information. Mm -hmm. Now, on Eleanor Kirschler's line, we found plenty of interesting information on Johann Leonard Dreschel, born in 1758. His parents were Johann Leonard Dreschel and Anna Dennerlane. His grandfathers were Johann Dreschel and I don't know if that is that a form of Matthew, Matthew? Yeah, mm -hmm. it's the Dennerlane. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Johann and his wife Barbara had seven young children, with three of them dying young. Um, Johann and Barbara had married without ceremony after paying a fine to the court for fornication before marriage. They, they had a child, uh, yeah, born one month after they married. So I think That's that one was common. a little bit, yeah. Especially and, with the Catholic Church. Yes, yes, definitely. Johann Jacob Lemmert died in 1808, age 33. This was just a string of like bad luck. And, you know, we were already talking about all the Johans in that line. But Johann Jacob died in 1808. He was only 33 years old. His father was Johann, but he was a Johann Peter. He died age 44, leaving his widow with six young children. And then his grandfather, who was also a Johann, Johann Peter, um, died at age 32, leaving behind a widow with eight children. So, I mean, he had actually started having children really young. And luckily after that, I believe it was a Balthazar and he lived like well into his seventies mm -hmm. or eighties. So, mm -hmm. you know, but those, those three Johans in a row just did not have a whole lot of luck. But, you know, in finding these records, once again, we're taking down brick walls. So, and we've got some really good documentation. And the ones that don't get sent to you, I mean, you'll see a lot of them that are either uploaded on the profiles or, you know, we've gone ahead and linked them so you can add those to your collection. Also new on that same line is the mother of Barbara Fisher, Dreschel. Now, her birth record listed her mother as Margaretha Nee Cole, and she was from Brunersville. And so, you know, you can see we have the, the copy of the birth record for that. That was pretty exciting. I love those old birth records. They're just so beautiful. I know, aren't they? Mm -hmm. And the writing in the old wills. Mm -hmm. I really long do. As, as long as I have somebody to translate. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we had several people that were using, um, you know, Stephen's abilities this week. And Irene, we have a team member that really loves to do the will transcriptions for us. So, you know, we just tag him in Discord and go, oh, and I have a will. <laughs> and oh, he goes great. and he types, he types the whole thing up for us on the profile and everything so that we have it. Um, but one of the things, of course, uh, that we had to go over again this week, and, you know, we've had some of our team members that have been participating all year. We have a few of them um, that are newer, and they haven't been with us that long or just joined us. And so we like to do a little refresher, and we came across the Dutch naming conventions again. So with the Dutch ancestors, the women are always identified in the documents with their maiden name. They do not take on the married name of the husband, which is nice because you can just track them with their, with their, their name throughout their life. Um, there's, you know, maybe a small, very small time period or after they've migrated where they might take the husband's name, but not generally. And there are no middle names. So um, prior to the adoption of surnames, many of them use the patronymic names. And they do have those search fields um, on the free sites that we use, like the, the Vivasvi um, is a really nice site to use, really easy, I think. And, you know, they have room to put whether you're using the patronymic or an actual surname. And they're generally patterned, though, after the father's name. So, you know, say you have a Hans for a father, then your surname, your patronymic name is Hansen. It's not the same as what his last name was. And so, you know, we have to go over these ourselves for people um, every so often so that we know our team members are, are naming those correctly. And, and we have our experts go through and try and, and check those for us and make sure we're doing it right. And the other thing that they often did is they named their children after the family members from both the father's and the mother's side. Mm -hmm. So firstborn son is named after the father's father the second son after the mother's father, 
and then the third son after the father. And they do the same thing for the daughter. So it kind of helps you if you notice that they are following that pattern to fill in, oh, well, there's probably a missing son in this. You know, I this should be a, a son number three. And, you know, it also helps you with knowing the the father's name. You know, if you're Willems, then his father's first name was probably Willem. And it gives you something to look for. So it really is helpful when you're doing the research. Now we use space pages on Monkey Tree for a wide variety of things, of course. Um, you know, sometimes we're just putting long research notes. If somebody has a really, you know, a four page will, or we have a lot of land to look at, there's a lot of different things we do with our space pages. And one of the ones that was created this week was for records in Somerset, England that use the code surname. And so that was really cool because it provides clues for future research. You know, if you are working on that name in that location, you can go now go to that page. And I I might be mistaken. I think it was Maddie that started that particular one. We had several space pages created. And you can see like all the baptisms during a certain time period and what the exact year was and what the parents' names were. So, so how do you find a space page? Well, this for you will be linked on um, on your main space page, your challenge page. But the other thing that we do is say, you know, I'm researching so-and-so coat. I can put that in a link in either research notes or in the sources. So you might find the link there like on several profiles okay. where the family is using the same surname so that you can look and go, oh, wait, now I can see, you know, there's... Uh, there's where mm -hmm. Thomas Coates was was baptized and it saves you a little bit of work. So Thanks. really Thank nice you. when when people can when the team members can do that. And then military, this is another thing we always like to take a look at just to honor those that have, have been in service somewhere. And you have a lot of revolutionary uh, mm -hmm. ancestors. Roberta's like, yes, I know, boy, there's mm -hmm. plenty of them. <laughs> so um, a lot of fourth and fifth, most of them fifth great grandfathers, Captain John Hill from New Hampshire, Gideon Fairs was in Virginia, militia. Jacob Dobkins was a private in the Virginia line during the Revolutionary War. Mm -hmm. George Estes served three different times. Mm -hmm. Your third great grandfather, Henry Frederick mm -hmm. Bolton, emigrated from England and then fought with the Pennsylvania militia. You had Samuel Muncie Jr., Virginia militia, Joseph Workman, Pennsylvania militia, fifth great grandfather, Nicholas Schaefer. Um, Berks County, so that's Pennsylvania militia, mm -hmm. and then Gershom Hall, Connecticut. Now, War of 1812, we only had one of those marks, so you may have more, um, but that was the one that was found was your third great-grandfather, Fairwick Clarkson. Actually, it was his father, James Lee, who was killed. <laughs> oh, really? We're, we're, yeah, it's just, we're just one generation off here. It's just, I'm sure it was a typo. And then, um, Great grandfather John Younger Estes served in Tennessee Cavalry. Mm -hmm. And then a great great uncle Henry Claxton in the Civil War on the Union side. So mm -hmm. a lot of a lot of interesting and patriotic people there. Now here is where we look at our our charts that me and some of the others use to keep track of the brick wall. So of course this is a nine generation fan chart for Roberta. All of the yellow spaces are where we had available brick walls that we could possibly break down. And so, you know, not only were people working towards accuracy and getting the, the profiles out to those points really fully sourced and, you know, getting the, the best information they possibly could on them, they also would hit those brick wall ancestors and that's where they needed to look for them. And a very diverse, um, amount of country so that was fun i like it when it's you know just kind of a mix but this right here is showing what your wiki tree chart looks like now roberta so you know you can see where there's still a few gaps there where we haven't quite been able to to push those lines out or we just flat ran out of time um but but your wiki tree branches are looking extremely full now they look really nice that's so exciting
So let's go ahead and go a little bit over collaboration and stuff. And then we'll look at who did the top scores for your week. Um, collaboration. And collaboration is a must. And we are a collaborative community anyways on WikiTree. But, you know, we wind up with anything from 30 up to 45, 50 people working on the tree during a week. And so we have to kind of work together. And we also have to not step on somebody else's work and maybe erase what they've done or, you know, um, get in their way somehow with the, the software. So collaboration, we have the spreadsheet on the left. Now we have an individual spreadsheet for each week and that's where people go ahead and they mark down hopefully the profile they're working on so that everybody knows where they're working. They get done, they erase it, put the next name they wanna work on and they move their self out that way. Start of the week's always the hardest because you know you you usually have a more limited amount of profiles you can work on. But as we get those branches built out, the people can just spread out and go crazy. Now on the right hand side is the G2G forum week, and um, that gives a post for each of the the great grandparents. Now sometimes people will go ahead and put what they're working on there or questions they might have. But pretty much now I think they've used that just for posting if they have bounty points. And for some reason, we have some weeks that people use it a lot, other weeks that they just don't. It, that's just how it seems to work out. And the third way is our most critical way. Uh, we have live chat and, you know, we are a global site. So we have people working on these branches around the clock. There's always somebody awake somewhere. And so <clears throat> here is where we can go in. We can talk about what we're working on. We can say, hey, can I get somebody to look at this? I'm not sure if this parent is correct or this document is correct. P several people will stop and go, oh, we'll look. You know, we can get translations done. Um, generally, we have to post out into the G2G if we want to, our form, if we want a translation here, we can just go, you know, tag somebody and go, oh, I need this, this marriage, you know, translated, and one of our experts will come in and translate for us. And once again, this is all volunteer. This is free work. So it's just really impressive how people work together so well in here. Um, sometimes we just go in there and cheer each other on, you know, like, good job, woohoo, you know, you found that, or way to go. And while it's not all about the points, the point system does help us not only stay motivated, but it kind of gives us a way to gauge how we're doing so far. So we have two ways to get points. The first way are those big ones, those bounty points. And you get 10 points each for the first brick wall ancestor you find on a line. Um, anything you add after that is gravy. It's nice, but you don't get bounty points for it. Now you also get one individual point though for nuclear family. So that would be siblings or children. Um, if you go in and you break a brick wall and you add the grandparent or the, you know, the parent, the new parents, that's your 20 points. And then you add the other five kids they had. Now you're at 25. So those points can add up pretty fast, actually, just kind of depending on how big the families are. Um, and at the end of the week, of course, we look at these total scores. We got to give those attaboys and we have our top scoring person, which is a new one this week. She has not hit MVP most valuable player yet. And that would be Jamie Arrington. So woo Jamie, way to go. Thank you, now, Jamie. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, and I know, and I can tell you, I know at least a a couple of these that were in the top five this week, not only were they in the top five, but I know for a fact that they worked on profiles they got absolutely no points for, you know, but they said, I don't care, I needed to work on this, or I wanted to add the husband and his family, um, you know, which just is really impressive to me. And so once again, Jamie was first, now second, this is our German expert, uh, one of them, and that's Dieter Leverenz, and he was in second place this week. We had Cheryl Hess, was in third, Margaret Beers, that's one of our Dutch experts, and Greg Lavoy was in fifth place. So way to go, you guys. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and pop this score sheet up. So we can see what the breakdown of the points is. Now wow. total points, 
Yeah, you you got some really really good ones, I'm sure. Especially watching last week's, um, we had some challenges with the points last week, but this week they were going to town. So, Jamie, our top performer, was a total of 115 points, but all together for our team was 490. You know, and once again, some of these people are working on stuff that they don't even get points for. So that's pretty incredible to me. And you know, the teams just never cease to amaze me at how much they can do. Now, create an ancestor is direct ancestors. So that would be, you know, just in the direct line only. And there were 25 added. Of course, that number would have been higher, you know, because um, there were already quite a few on Roberta's Wiki Tree Tree. And, but our team still found people to add. And then for, here's a big number for those nuclear family members, um, the children and whatnot, 345 profiles created for them we wound up with 120 bounty points. So that's 12 brick wall ancestors, Roberta, just for you. <laughs> you know, and then additional ancestors behind some of those, which is the most exciting part, I think. Mm -hmm. Unique profiles edited. There were 1,069 profiles edited, and this is one we keeping in mind. And then total edits. Now, this is contribution. So anytime somebody goes in and they change a date, they add a source, they fix a name, whatever they do, uh, they get a point for it. Uh, it doesn't add to the total points, but they get they get their contribution numbers are raised. And so once again, this does not include any of the work, um, intense work they put in on those space pages or people that did transcriptions or people that looked up articles for us or people that added the peripheral family members. And still there was over 3,100 contributions this week. So, you know, that's just to me an amazing number. You know, I, if I work every day for a year, I would have to make more than 10 a day to do that myself. <laughs> it would just not be possible. I know, right? It's just, it's incredible. You know, and I know a lot of people talk about um, how this is a, a type of crowdsourcing. In a way it is, but, you know, I like to think of it as community sourcing because we get together and do it. We just don't put it out there and say, okay, 50 people go work on this and tell me at the end of the week what you found. You know, we're all working together to get to this, the same common goals and it, the collaboration and the skills and the sharing of resources is always incredible. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and we all learn from each other. So that part of it's really neat too. So Roberta, did we at least meet your expectations? Oh my for gosh. You know, I didn't have a lot of expectations because I have worked for a really long time and I'm like, I would just be happy with anything somebody turned up, I'm just dumbstruck at how much has been uncovered. And I can hardly wait to go and look at my tree. <laughs> I was, I behaved. I did get notifications that things were being yeah. changed. So I'm like, oh, I'm not gonna look, I'm not gonna look, but now I, I, I can't wait to look. So. I know, and you know, and then I always just imagine how late people must stay up. The guests on their first night, they're like, "I'll go to no, I can't go to bed yet. I still got, I got to look and see what they did with this one." Yeah, yeah, and I hope you'll send me the spreadsheet so that I can yes. see who to check. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, definitely. You'll get a you'll get a copy of the um, the working fan chart that we had, as well as the sheet with the bounty points and yeah. stuff like that. I'm so, so yeah. excited! I, this has just been like Christmas for me early. I just, I, I just, I'm blown away. Thank you so much. Well, thank you for letting us play in your branches. It has just been, like I said, you know, it's just been so much fun. And it's going to be really hard to leave behind. I know there's a few people that will straggle after and go, okay, now I got to finish this anyways, because even though the week's over, I know there's a lot of people really excited about Irene's, but, um, you know, I'll be one of those people are like, I'll be torn, you know, do we do this or can I go back and at least finish that profile? Because the, the week goes so fast. It just goes so fast. Yeah. Not on my end. <laughs> <laughs> I know you, you guys that have to wait, you know, and, and Irene, I'll, I'll caution that to you too. We always tell the guests that you'll get these notifications and stuff in your email saying like, oh, you need to go approve this merge for somebody. And you're like, oh, and no, just leave it because the paid staff will take care of it. So that, okay. you, don't, so that you don't go out and peek at your branches. And I guess the hardest part is the not peeking. So. Okay. 
<laughs> Especially when you're getting notifications. That, yeah. Yeah. Or we're just like, yep, I know. <laughs> All right. That's good to know. And then... go back into this for just a minute and oh look there it's Irene <laughs> so yay <clears throat> now Irene says she's always been interested in her family history because of her mother she told her many fascinating stories about her family and growing up in the small town of Bordentown New Jersey because she was the youngest child and there was a large gap between her and the siblings. Many of the relatives had died before she was born. So she only knew about them through her mom's stories. And that's great though, that, you know, your mom was passing down this history um, to you. In later years, she put together a family history document for Irene. And since her passing, Irene's been trying to expand that document and learn more about her family. She loves researching and gets excited when she finds a new clue or can document a family story through some old newspaper clipping or a record that turns up. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that. And Irene, so what did you say when they called you about the hidden marriage record? I think everybody knows now that that record was found in that frame for your great grandparents. Well, actually, nobody called me. I found out about it because I saw Connie's message to me on another platform. And she sent me a link to the Facebook post. So I immediately went to Facebook and looked at it. And honestly, I was shaking as I was reading it because I knew the names I saw Bordentown, New Jersey, and Trenton, New Jersey, and I, I knew immediately, my God, this is my great-grandparents. And I was just amazed that it had survived, that somebody found it. It was really, I was just blown away and overwhelmed by it, totally overwhelmed. So were, was that um, set of great grandparents, was that one of the ones that your mom had talked to you about? Like, oh, as you yes. Were? Yes, because that was her mom's mother and father. And they all, you know, they knew that she knew them. She grew up around them. And, you know, they had fascinating backstories. Um, my great grandmother came over basically as an indentured servant from Ireland my great grandfather, in addition to being a machinist, you know, was a ventriloquist and had built his own wow. merry-go-round. So I, I think that's why I was always so fascinated by them is because they had such colorful stories. Um, and so it was, it was especially touching to me that it was their marriage certificate that was found. Right. That's really great. Now, who's the oldest relative that you actually knew personally? That would be my mother's father, my grandfather, Valentine Detterer. He was the only grandparent that was still alive when I was born. So he's the only one I knew. Yeah. And he also was from that Bordentown, New Jersey area. He married my DeWorth grandmother. So that's where they spent their years. Now, with your experience, um, especially with your mother handing down the stories and whatnot, and you learning uh, possibly how hard it is to find, to, you know, information on your ancestors when you didn't get to grow up around all of these people, what do you find the most important to pass down to younger generations about their own family history? Well, for me, and I don't know if it resonates with other family members, but I think it's important to know where you came from, what the people before you went through that actually has enabled you to have the life that you have now. If, if those people hadn't got on boats in Germany and Ireland and wherever and, and came here, I wouldn't be here. And so we study so much history in school but I really think you should study your own family history because it's very rewarding. There's unique people, very patriotic people, um, 
very creative people that are part of your family history. And I think it just enriches your life to know about that. So that's, oh, uh, I, I hope to expand on my mother's document, which I've already done, but then formalize it and send it out to the younger generation so that at least they'll have it. Right. And I definitely agree with that. You know, I get so excited when I see some of the really young people on WikiTree that are just so excited about their research and they're really getting into their ancestors because they're, they're you know, for all those people that do that, there's a lot more, it seems like, out there that aren't as interested in their families. You know, and at one point, um, you're not going to have that good foundation if you don't talk to the people that are around now and find out what you can from the people that are living it's going to be a lot harder to try and dig through that later and really get a good grasp right right okay and then what now you got to see roberta's reveal at least everybody looks at the challenge a little bit differently what do you hope to see in participating in the wiki tree challenge well the I'd like to see, um, m my primary hope would be to learn more about my great grandmother's roots in Ireland. I have really hit a true brick wall about her and her sister. I only know what my mother told me and, you know, I can, I was able to document a little bit of the story, but can't get any further can't ever find out for sure where in ireland she came from never have been able to find her sister on another census after 1870 it's i know the story of where she lived and her family but i've never been able to find her and document anything so that would be the first thing and then my great grandfather i know his parents, his grandparents, his great grandparents, but I haven't formalized documenting some of those connections. So to see more concrete documentation of that would be great. Now you have the um, the two aunts, correct? Are they also tied to the the Irish ancestral line? Um, I'm sorry, the two aunts. Yes. Um, it's my. It's my great grandmother and her sister. Okay. Those two, those are the ones that are linked that I'm hoping to find out more about. Well, hopefully we can find something for you. Um, you know, I know they're going to deep dive into everybody that we have on your tree, but it's always fun to know if there's a, you know, a particular branch that, that somebody likes, or, you know, some people just want more of the individual stories or, they, they just have set things in mind that they're hoping for. There's an, another kind of sad thing. So there's a story, the grandfather I did know always talked about a sister who at the age of two, after the mother died, the father gave her up. And my grandfather and his one brother, when they were older, tried to find her and never had any luck. Wow. I've never even been able to find documentation of her birth, let alone find out what happened to her. So that would be another amazing discovery if somebody could at least find proof that she was born. Yeah, that would be great. Well, hopefully. Um, do you have any other interesting stories you want to share with us and that your mother had passed on? Well, I have a fun thing that has happened as a result of all the marriage certificates. So my great grandfather, in addition to being a machinist on the side, he was sort of a carnival type person. He was a ventriloquist. He had a fire eating act and he built his own merry-go-round that he brought to local carnivals and things. And People put me in touch with a website where I could look up old newspaper um, archives, and I have found little snippets where they talk about Professor DeWorth and his merry-go-round. So that was great. Oh, that's but awesome. Then I knew there was a model of it that he built first that an uncle had, 
and I was talking with a cousin and it was a convoluted story, but when the one uncle died, her father got it and he didn't know what to do with it. So he donated it to a funeral home in New Jersey, but nobody could remember what one. And this is back in 1983. Well, with help from a man at the Bordentown Historical Society, he contacted the Bordentown Funeral Home and lo and behold, they had it and it was in the basement of the funeral home still. Oh, so wow. I, I drove down to Bordentown Monday and I actually got to see the model merry-go-round that my great-grandfather built. So that was wonderful. And that all happened as a result of the marriage certificate being found. Yeah, that's great. Well, I know we do have, um, you know, people that, that specialize in finding those newspaper articles. Man, some of them are just so good at it. So that'll definitely be one thing they'll try to be stay on top of this week. And um, okay, so do we have any questions I have missed in the audience? Oh, I popped this up earlier. Melanie says, pro tip, turn off your email notifications on WikiTree so you don't get tempted. <laughs> if you don't know how to do that, um, let us know. Okay. <laughs> we'll teach you. I'll make a note about that. <laughs> <laughs> I think that one was aimed at, at Roberta. <laughs> Shelly's asking how you, it, were you behaving? <laughs> I was behaving, but it hurt a lot. <laughs> <laughs> But now I don't have to behave anymore. I know. Now you get to look through everything. Oh, here here was that top performer. She told her, her husband he had to treat this entire week as one of our thons. We do our quarterly marathons where we do nothing but wiki treat. And he had to leave her alone. So I guess that's one of the ways she got things, um, got so much done this week. Oh, and Cheryl's asking, do you have any pictures that we can use? Yes, any any that are up there, and I have other ones um, that I could share. I just I didn't know how much you wanted me to put up there. Yeah, and actually, what you can do is just go ahead and email those to your captain. Okay. And, yeah, and she'll make sure that people get them put out there. But we do like to bling up our profiles when we can, so we'd like okay. to add the the pictures as well as you know add that personal information. All right. to hopefully, I put a picture for all of the people that are on the tree currently so oh wow and they're free to use those i'm lucky that i had one for each of them yeah that is wonderful june says check circus world for the history of circus history okay For a good story to distract you with this week, author Sharon Lee wrote some stories about a merry-go-round. So I think we're on a carnival theme. I have a feeling we're <laughs> going to see a lot about carnivals in the Discord room this week. And that one's Lynette Jester, oh, another one of our yeah. team members. I wonder if it's any connection to my husband's. I have been working on a small family tree for him for him and his brother so well i can tell you one of the things that they are already um working on <laughs> that i saw when they were talking in discord earlier irene is you know one of the things that we like to do is it's really super easy to see how people are related so you know that's how we can look and go oh i'm 17th cousin of roberta estes and mm -hmm. it actually will walk you through the steps of how oh, you know you're connected great. so the more great people on your tree, the more likely you connect and you don't right now collect to connect to the global tree. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm telling you, by the end of this week, you will. So okay, <laughs> we've great. already got people looking at that and they know which branches they have to work on to get you connected. So it's going to be really fun to see, you know, how many cousins you have by the end of this for the people oh, that, that are working great. on it. Steven says, Baraboo is in my family's home county. Awesome. I'm going to look that up as soon as I get off here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I think we have covered all of it. 
Yeah, she says we're all pretty much guaranteed. Um, since you weren't connected, we will be connecting you. And yeah, we're all going to be filling up the Discord room going, but I'm 11th Cousins, but I'm 10th Cousins. <laughs> uh, we, really. yeah, really, we, we have a lot of fun. We have a lot of fun with it. Okay, so I think we're going to go ahead and oh, one more comment here from Cheryl. Roberta, I love reading your blogs. Very interesting and detailed. Thank you so much. I actually really love doing that because it brings my ancestors to life. And it's my way of preserving that information for whoever comes after me in the future. Oh. Yeah, it really is an amazing way um, to share those. I, and I link them all on my the rookie tree, the wiki tree profile for that person. So when I'm finished. Yes, we've seen a lot of that. <laughs> yeah, we really have. And, you know, and once again, our, our some of our team participants would get a little caught up and they're like, hey, I don't know what to look for now because she's got like all this stuff about them already. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and thank challenge participants. All of you team members out there, you guys rock. I mean, every week you get in there and you do this and you face all these challenges and you research in new areas and you still always surprise us to come up with these great discoveries. So thank you very much. And then thank you guests for coming on. Irene, we're really excited to start your week. Uh, Roberta, will definitely, you know how to reach us if you have any questions about your goodies once you get to start looking through them. It has really been an honor to go through and work on your branches. It's been a lot of fun. Thank and you then, so much. Thank you to everybody watching, or we wouldn't be here, of course. We would just all talk in Discord. <laughs> to each other. Um, and for those of you that don't know, you can check out more at www.wikitree.com. Don't forget to like the video, go ahead and subscribe so you receive notifications. And I think we're going to go ahead and say good night. All right. Good night. Thank you all. Can't Bye, wait. everybody. Bye.